Okay, now we have kind of a special tape here, and it's called The Prophecies because it's based on a book uh, that Billy wrote called The Prophecies. But the prophecies, uh, most of them anyway, don't come from him. They're, they're a collection of information from different sources. Throughout the contact notes, uh, in several cases and several times, that they gave him some prophetic things that uh, would happen in the near future. For instance, in 75, Billy asked for any predictions for the coming year. And they would give him some predictions, uh, usually just within the next coming year's time for the general area. But most of these predictions were all based uh, just on political events and maybe a large snowfall causing damage, local crime, things like that. Uh, if there was any political problems maybe leading to a death or an assassination, assassination, they would usually comment on things like that. And those prophecies generally would always come from Semyasi. Billy also got prophetic uh, information from other levels. For instance, when he was younger, uh, during his uh, time of training with Ascot from the, the Dow Universe, in 1956 he gave him a series of prophetic things also, which we went over somewhat on the contact notes. And that primarily dealt with a, um, a span of time dealing with several assassination and murders of political figures which uh, she felt was necessary actually for events to actually unfold the way that they were supposed to. Billy also received prophetic information from what's called the Patali level. As I talked earlier on one of the tapes, on the creation tapes, about um, uh, the different levels that man can actually evolve to, the highest level that we evolve to as a spirit form is called the Patali level. Some people think of this as a group consciousness level. Billy was able to receive prophetic information also from this level, uh, which was kind of filtered down to him through the High Council of the Pleiades worlds, and uh, that information was received by him and passed on also. So we have information from several different sources here, Ascot, Sinyasi, Patali, and even Billy himself, who understands some forms of future prediction, have all gone together to put together this little book. Now. Um, some of the prophecies, of course, are from conversations when he had in the ships and so forth, but the uh, prophecies that came from the Patali level were of a different kind. Uh, when you receive transmissions from a higher uh, life form like this, they don't come in the form of language. They come in the form of symbols, uh, and that comes through on what's called spiritual telepathy. <clears throat> spiritual telepathy, unlike material or a primary telepathy, is very, very long range, and it doesn't come in in an audible form. It comes in a series of symbols, which the person who's a student understands it, understands it then must then convert the symbols into language and tell the story properly. So one has to be trained and understand the symbol language very well to be able to do that. When Billy was very young, uh, part of his uh, consciousness and memory and abilities and knowledge of the symbol language was unlocked, and over the years of study and so forth, he learned more and more about this, so he was able then to convert the symbols into uh, language. Billy's own predictions are not the uh, uh, result of any type of future vision, but uh, Kabbalistic calculations. The transmissions that he gets from ETs and higher spiritual levels are more accurate and far more sweeping as far as the type of information they can get. Billy then receives them these types of transmissions in the spiritual language of symbols, and then he translates them into our language. This is different, he says, than the abilities of seers, he calls, who we normally, some other prophets and seers who give us, uh, in our modern times, give us prophetic statements. He says they see the future usually through their own psychic abilities, and it isn't from the uh, spiritual language that he's talking about. The problem therein is that without use of obtaining information through the symbol language, the prophecies generally will always be a mixture of the own individual's egos, fears, and desires, and they're never very accurate. I think we're seeing that in our own time. There's an awful lot of people, uh, psychics, and people predicting things one thing and the other, but uh, you know they're never really very accurate. Maybe they are accurate on a few things, and then they're way off on others. So there certainly isn't any continuing high probability of accuracy by anybody that I know of. So what Billy's talking about is 
There can be an exact science to seeing the future because such does exist, but it involves the knowledge of a particular language of symbols that most people, or practically no one else on the planet, really has any knowledge of. Interesting thing about the prophecies, uh, the way they're written, and there some in many areas they're very vague, and in many areas it kind of like you know prompts you to ask more and want to know more about it. But Billy says that he doesn't make any attempt to explain the prophecies any more in detail than he's gone into here, because he believes only a person who can understand the truth himself when it is given to him in hidden form is able to bear or tolerate it. Is how he puts it which means that the prophecies themselves have some hidden meanings in, in uh, different areas and are a little hard to understand to most of us. But for one who understands prophecy and one who understands future vision or may not know some of the symbols, they would be able to unravel these mysteries on their own. And his point is well taken that if, uh, you know, if we don't have the level of knowledge to understand it, then we probably shouldn't even have the information. He makes an analogy as to, an, to our stomachs, that just like our stomach, which is only capable of digesting digestible foods, it can't digest poisons and rocks and other things that you stick in it, uh, that the human understanding can only take in what it can comprehend, that which it can understand or what is digestible in an understanding form. If you try to take in information that's too over, uh, too high for you, or too difficult to understand. Uh, it's just going to overpower you and probably cause you frustration, irritation, or whatever. Billy is also able to calculate a person's death and his past life, something that uh, he was taught and understands quite well. But he, he says these are the sort of things that when he speaks to someone and um, you know they have good reason to want to know about these things, and he's more than happy to provide that. But he's always cautious about. Uh, letting predictions out too clearly or letting certain people know certain things because it leads unfortunately to uh, you know fear or whatever in that individual predictions let me clear up a couple things you know predictions what we call a prediction that's a future event these are computed with cabalistic uh, calculations and they lead to very exacting results predictions always come to pass he says very absolutely accurately that's because a prediction rests on an established fact and then proceeds to a certain outcome or effect that has to take place because of the factual knowledge uh, that it started with. So it's kind of like lo logic. If you take a logical statement and allow it to move forward, it comes to a logical conclusion by virtue of its own clarity of, of thought and truth. So prediction seems to be something like that. If you start with an established fact, you can calculate then the result more or less of that uh, prediction or that fact that's been started in motion. So it's very exacting. Prophecy, though, is slightly different, he says. They're different. And a prophecy is generally just like a warning function. It can show an end result. Uh, but that result might come from certain facts if there's no change happens in a certain time. So it's like a warning about something to happen, but uh, free will could come into play there. But if no free will comes in or something, nothing gets involved, then the prophecy becomes a prediction, and he says will surely come to pass. So we have some difference here between a prediction and a prophecy. A prediction is something that's almost absolute, that can be calculated based on known facts, and will almost have a positive outcome. A prophecy is more of a warning, and can actually be interfered with, but if nothing happens to change a prophecy, then it will it becomes a prediction by virtue of the fact that nothing was done to stop it, and it also will come to pass. Prophecy also is quite variable according to the free will of men, and that's the point he was trying to make in the basic difference between them. That when we hear a prophetic statement, it's a warning about something, and we have a you know the possibility of maybe doing something about it. Therefore, it's not certain that a prophesized event will take place if it's changed by a good evolution. And what he means by that is that this means that a person's evolution, or in other words, your continued growth of knowledge, accumulation of spiritual, spiritual knowledge, that has to happen without the, uh, if you, without the knowledge of a, pro a prophesized event getting in the way or interfering with your natural course of evolution. Say you're just going through your life and you're moving towards something, 
you're living your life in a certain way, and suddenly a prophecy comes along that you find very disturbing, you think it's going to have some effect on you, and you change your life, you know, based on this prophecy. Maybe you react differently, or you just change the course of events in your life. You have then interfered with your normal evolution, which would run its course and provided certain kinds of learning. So, uh, in this respect, then a prophecy is not good for a person to know especially if he doesn't accurately understand the ending or what's going to happen. Prophecies usually only demonstrate one possibility, and at the same time they just demonstrate one type of warning. So we have to regard prophecies then as something that one can be changed because of free will and regard them as kind of a warning then. Prophecies should never be clearly revealed, he says, because the person then will make changes in an evolution, the evolution then is thrown off because the person does something that he normally wouldn't. Also, there's certain events in a prophecy which usually should be kept secret because here he's insinuating that one of the problems with the prophecy is that people overreact. And I see that even today where people are becoming more and more sensitive about uh, predictions that psychics make and so forth about uh, the great earthquake in California or the entire West Coast sinking into the water. These things can cause great fear and disruption in people's lives. I know several people right now who have really disrupted their entire lives, uh, moving their families, losing their jobs, selling their homes and so forth, out of fear because of predictions that they read in the paper or in newsletters that are being circulated around the country. And this, for people who are slightly unstable and are easily drawn to fear or negative things, this is very disruptive to them. They just can't help themselves. And so it really is not serving, you know, the proper uh, interest that the, uh, the predictor probably had in mind. You have to be very careful when you predict things and come about your predictions, you know, like saying that they are real, that they're really going to happen, because it can be very disruptive to people's lives and, like I say, causing people an awful lot of fear, and we certainly don't want that. Certain information within prophecies must also be kind of vague, he says, so only people with a certain level of understanding would be capable of decoding them. I guess that would be similar to like Nostradamus, and he has all these quatrains with, you know, dates and time schedules and so forth that nobody ever seems to get straight. I noticed that there was a uh, book out just about a year or so ago, some people claiming that they had finally unlocked the you know, the Nostradamus code, and they felt they had nailed it down, and now you could count on this book. Well, <laughs> I've had that book on the shelf, and so far all the events they said <clears throat> that would happen in 92, none of them have happened. So, uh, again, they've goofed. They were not uh, able to properly decode them. Because of that, they wasted a lot of people's time, money. A lot of people bought the book and probably changed things in their life based on that or filled their head with a bunch of nonsense that didn't really happen. So these people were behaving rather irresponsibly by claiming to have done so much and really have done nothing at all. This leads us to kind of one final statement on this, and then we'll move into some of the prophecies and predictions. But be very careful of those uh, who prophesize also, a little caution to you out there who may be wanting to do some predicting or prophesizing. Even though you think you may have learned some ways of calculating it, you may be gaining in some visions and so forth that seem to come true now and then, be very careful in these difficult times coming up in the near future about making predictions or prophecies of any kind. Because, for the most part, if you only know a little bit about prophecy or prediction, you're going to be wrong. And it's this type of information where a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. If you don't really know what you're doing, Billy says in the times coming, which are very dangerous, which world events are going to be very dramatic, if you are certain predictors and so-called seers and prophetic psychic people are going to be saying things that are going to uh, be coming happen, and they're not going to happen, they're going to cause a lot of fear and trouble with people, and a lot of psychics and predictors are going to wind up being killed or murdered or whatever by people who are just driven insane uh, by being misled in their lives by these psychic predictions. We know we're going to have 
obviously some difficult times coming up with natural disasters and everything. So here's a little tip during difficult times. Don't uh, be predicting things and causing people uh, to change their lives and becoming responsible for other people's lives unless you're really sure about what you know what you're doing. If you start predicting things and change people's lives and it doesn't really happen, then there's liable to be some recourse into your life. In the introduction to in Billy's book, he's um, taking a little time to like remind people here on Earth that of the times that we are living in. And as I mentioned to you before, we're in this so-called New Age period we're moving into, where geographically we're moving into this close proximity of the central sun. Um, this time period is uh, obvious. It is a time of change when the stepped-up radiations from the central sun then start affecting everything on the planet, including the planet itself. So it's a time where things speed up. It's a time of turmoil because as things speed up, uh, it goes a little too fast for society and for certain people, so we have a lot of problems. The predictions of past from biblical times which are still coming true, uh, we have to be very careful about. They're happening. And he cautions us that as a race, as a planet, we're really doing nothing about the major problems on our planet. He says since 1974, the total atomic destruction of the Earth has been averted by some very powerful beings, extraterrestrials. That, of course, was some of the work of Ascot in, the, uh, in his younger contacts. That danger is past. Uh, that was existing then. But the danger of a third world war has not been removed at all. It's still going to happen pretty much just exactly the way that it's predicted and has been predicted for a couple of thousand years because the people are, <coughs> excuse me, are doing nothing to change it. Billy says, look to the beginning of the third world war to come during a time when we think things are very peaceful. Suddenly, without any warning at all, in the middle of the night, the cry of war is going to break out in the middle of the night, and it's going to be a great surprise to everybody here. So we want to look perhaps right now. There's hardly any peace anywhere on the planet. There's wars everywhere you look. Okay, let's move into some of the uh, <clears throat> more definite prophecies. And let me start a little bit with some of the prophecies from the Talmud of Manuel which is the original teachings and thoughts of uh, Manuel, who was wrongly called Jesus Christ. One of the important things in there that uh, and we all have heard is the prediction that uh, he said that he would return. Some people believe he's returning in 2,000 years. Well, that isn't exactly what was in there. He just says that it will come to pass in 2,000 years uh, when mankind has become capable of better thought, <clears throat> that his teachings will reveal, be revealed again unfalsified. And that's exactly what happened in 1963 when his original writings were dug up. Actually, the writings were written by Judas Iscariot. They were dug up, they've been translated, and they are now out in a little book called the Talmud Emmanuel. He mentions also in those writings that there will be a new prophet in our time or what he calls the distant future, them, that will not possess as much power over evil or disease as he does, but the new prophet of our time will have the knowledge, which is the same as his, will have the knowledge and understanding of creation, and will be able to, as he put it, shake the foundations of earth with the revelations of the truth that's brought forth. He goes on also to mention, which is kind of interesting here, that the time when his... Uh, <coughs> His teachings will be revealed. It says, will be a time when a war is threatened from space, and many new gods will seek dominion over the earth. Again, as we mentioned earlier, that Emmanuel is aware that gods are humans, and they are humans, great wisdom kings on the highest realms of physical evolution, who exert great force and knowledge over other people. So here he's talking about that there will be a time, and apparently it's very much time about right now, where there will be a war threatened from there will be a war threatened from space. He also goes on to talk about the prophet of the current time of our time uh, will lead a very difficult life, will be perse persecuted greatly. There's also some uh, prophetic statements um, in the Talmud of Emmanuel at the time when Emmanuel was at the Mount of Olives talking to his followers, and they're asking them about these signs that he's talking about when they're going to happen. And um, 
he says, take care and beware that in the future time, that he's in 2,000 years that he's talking about, that he says, many people will come and try to take credit for him, claiming that they are Emmanuel. They will try to deceive people. There will be a lot of rumors of war, but people shouldn't really be too afraid because this really isn't the end. It's not the end of a world. <clears throat> but it is a time when people are going to rise up against each other. One kingdom will rise up against another one. There's going to be great earthquakes and great water, he says, back and forth. This is all the beginning of the tribulations, he says. Man will be delivered in affliction. There will be massive amounts of death. There are going to be cults rise up against each other. Uh, large amounts of blood will flow. Many people are going to die in these battles between these groups. Hate is on the rise. Um, but he says anybody who really believes in the truth, people that really find the truth within creation, will be able to survive all of this. It says when There's a comment in here also. It says, when the people see the horror of the devastation of Jerusalem, of which has been spoken by prophets, then the end will come. So apparently, uh, through all this destruction of the war and everything that's apparently going to be starting soon, at some point towards the end of it, they will see all the destruction and devastation of the places in and around Jerusalem, and that will be close to the end. The next warning from Emmanuel is for the Jewish nation during this time of great war, and he's cautioning the people, uh, the Jewish people, to hide, to flee to the mountains, especially to women who are pregnant, to run for their lives, really, because of the mass destruction uh, that's going to hit uh, in their country. He says there will be a great affliction as never before seen since the beginning of the world. It's going to be some of the worst death and large amounts of death to ever happen on our planet. Uh, he also mentions, which is kind of interesting, that metal machines will be built for the air, the sea, and the land. Uh, excuse me, the land is going to rot. He talks about heavy projectiles, metal projectiles that burn the world, and nothing will be spared. It says the foundations of life will be laid in the projectiles so they can kindle the deadly fire with it. Then he talks about if at that time, when we're launching all of these projectiles in the war, if the sons of heaven do not interfere, he says that almost no one will survive. He says this will come at a time when the population will be 10 times 500 million people, where two parts of them will be exterminated and killed. So he's talking, it actually mentions there are about two-thirds of the people, the population of the planet, will die during this terrible time of war. He cautions uh, us that during this time of war, he says, there's going to be many false prophets. Uh, there will be, <coughs> excuse me, many people claiming to be him, to be an Emmanuel. He says, we will hear statements where people will be saying that he's in the desert. Everybody go out and see Emmanuel there or he's over here at the ocean, or he's in the chambers. He says, don't believe that. He says, there's just going to be a lot of lying, because he says he does return, that physically he will return, uh, but uh, <clears throat> he will make himself known, because he says he, his coming will be with the host of the sons of heaven, by whom I have my life again at that time. So he's talking about that again, just as it says in the Talmud Emmanuel, that his life will once again be procreated and caused to be at this time by benefit of the sons of heaven, uh, the heavenly fathers, and they will help him one more time to make his life known. Another collection of prophecies that's also mentioned in the book were the prophetic things that were explained to him by Ascot, and that came back in 1956. Apparently among Ascot's uh, <clears throat> responsibilities and duties during her mission was to prevent a terrible universe catastrophe. It says in the notes that they were very concerned that the events on Earth may actually uh, cause some destruction of the universe itself. Now it uh, <clears throat> seems pretty amazing that us little Earthmen could actually do anything that would disturb the universe, and especially back in the 60s. And they were very concerned up through the year 1974 that some doomsday device that the certain people were playing with could actually destroy part of the universe. I never took that too seriously until um, just recently I found out that uh, currently now, here in 1992, that certain scientists are actually discovering that our giant sun and some of our large gas ball 
uh, planets may actually, instead of being nuclear reaction type things like we've always thought, are not at all, but in fact seem to be drawing energy from other dimensions. That at the top of these great uh, uh, sources of power, like our sun, on the very top pole and on the bottom pole, there is sort of a hexagon area at the top that seems to be receiving uh, energy, and they have mathematically calculated the probability this may be true, that our sun may indeed be connected to other universes or other dimensions as we think of it through the surface area on the top and the bottom of the sun, which means that our sun itself isn't really a nuclear explosion, that somehow it's being heated up actually by dimensional energy. A comment along that line was even from the Pleiadians that the sun itself is not uh, quite what we think it is, that even though the surface temperature is quite hot, that we will be surprised to find out once where our technology advances that it's actually cooler on the inside, that uh, it's not the great explosion in the middle that we think it is. So possibly the suns somehow do receive energy from other dimensions, and that could be perhaps what the ETs were worried about in the 60s, that if we were to set off some of these devices which could upset actually the solar system, some sort of energy or effect could be set off affecting other dimensions, which could unleash untold problems that may in effect actually uh, destroy part of the universe as they were so worried about. Well, apparently, Ascot in those years took whatever steps she felt was necessary and did intervene in mankind to prevent those certain events from happening. So, uh, good for her. Uh, there was warnings always from Ascot during those times, too, where she talked about future events back in the 56, uh, which actually pertain to now, because she was talking about, uh, you know, America, Russia, and China are pushing for, like, world domination. They're kind of fighting it out. Well, Russia, of course, has broke up, and that's changed a little bit, and China hasn't really played their hand yet. Uh, yeah, because <clears throat> at this particular time, we ought to be very careful of the Jewish Zionists who are plotting a lot of murderous deeds and violence and terrorism and actually are working in conjunction with certain Christian religions uh, to uh, take over certain areas of the world. So apparently in the face of the might of America and Russia and, what other, and other countries in China, certain elements of the Jewish uh, people, the Jewish Zionists, and certain Christian groups are plotting actually how they could take over certain, certain parts of the planet themselves. It's mentioned in here that the people of Earth should take care not to help Israel, for every small assistance is refunctioned by them into a deadly weapon against the back at us. So historically it's talking about that the, uh, they're suggesting that it's going to be a natural event for the destruction of Israel and it is for the betterment of mankind. Not that death is good, it's just that we are not aware really of what a uh, terrible part that Israel will actually play in the mass destruction and loss of life on the planet Earth. There was a whole series of prophecies given to Billy then in 1956, <clears throat> which are now quite a few years old, and I'll just dash over them for you. I had gone over them a little bit in the contact notes themselves, but since we have a tape here just on prophecies, I'll reiterate some of these events because it's important also uh, uh, to note that these events have all come to pass and with terrible accuracy. I say terrible because uh, we're going to read off a list of deaths here and so forth, and all these events came to pass exactly as Ascot said they would, which only uh, confirms again their very incredible technology and their abilities. She says the unavoidable events of the future, and here she's talking in 1956, she says these events will happen with absolute exact happen with absolute exactness and accuracy just as she's about to explain them to Billy. And I'll just run over them because I have gone over them one more time. She first talked about the murder of Joseph Stalin, which would be on March 5th, 1953, and that was done by the party itself. Um, it says here that uh, Stalin was showing too much friendliness towards the Jewish Zionist terrorist, and so for that reason he was poisoned. Uh, it mentions in there also his, his successor Nikita Khrushchev will be forced out of office in 64, and that was uh, to give the rationalized Zionist hostilities its last form was the expression. So um, it says during that time period <coughs> in America, uh, Fitzgerald Kennedy 
uh, will be elected to office, but he will be murdered in 63, it says, by the secret order of the American Security Organization, the CIA. The day of his death will be November 22, 1962, in Dallas, Texas. It says there will be a second political assassination following just five years after that. Uh, uh, through the order of the same organization, a presidential candidate will be killed. His death will be on June 6, 1968, in Los Angeles, his name will be Robert Kennedy, a brother of the president. It says the holy office, <coughs> excuse me, in Rome will also be pulled in the worldwide political and religious intrigue, just the same as with Stalin. A poison will be used to kill Pope John the Thirteenth, who will only serve for a very short time. His successor, Pope Paul the Sixth, will be removed by the same method by intrigues, it says, of the cardinals in cooperation again with the Jewish Zionist extremists who for quite some time have already been planning their murderous schemes and are trying to direct the future events, you know, to their own will. <coughs> Excuse me. Greece is also chosen, it says, for the assassination of head of state. Um, for the future, uh, Let's it be known that King Paul I will die on March 6, 1964, using the same poison uh, as some of these others have been killed with. His successor will be named Constantinos. Constantinos. Uh, he will be forced out of office uh, by a military coup uh, because of his childish inabilities. And uh, so, says Egypt won't be spared either. In the mid-1970s, a dictatorial statesman named Abd el Gamel Nasser will be poisoned just as years earlier, um, as his friend the Emir of Kuwait, who will die in 1965, poisoned at the hands of his own family. Mentions uh, King Faisal in Saudi Arabia in 1975 will be shot by members of his own family. She said this series of political intrigues and deaths were among the most important dates coming over the next 20 years, and Billy was very cautioned at the time not to reveal them uh, because these events needed to play their hand out and happen exactly the way that they were. She was very careful of not wanting to disturb any of the natural events of the future. So Billy didn't, even though they were all written down and tucked away for a while. He never really talked about them, and he kept them very quiet. The next section in his prophecy book uh, deals with some um, prophecies that he actually received and some training he received from Semyasi when he was in the uh, beam ship with her. And I related this story to you once before, so I'll just run it over closely. They had a device inside of the ship which you could hold your hand on and think about any person that you wanted to uh, actually know something about, either the conscious mind or the subconscious mind. And by placing your hand on this, um, you could actually read what was going on in their subconscious thoughts. And you could look into their future because all of our subconsciouses are con uh, connected to our future and have some knowledge of it. Well, Billy was shown how to use the device, uh, which he did, and he chose to look at the life of Fr General Francisco uh, Franco at the time of Spain. And when he did, he was able to look into the conscious mind of this person and see that he was a terribly afraid of dying, that there was a lot of fear. And when the equipment was adjusted, uh, Billy was able to look into the subconscious and was surprised to see that there was no fear of death inside the subconscious. And he was reminded by Semyasi that that's only natural because the subconscious mind, which is attached always directly to the spiritual subconscious, knows and is aware that death itself is nothing to really fear, that it's just a carrying on into a different state. So that part is in there as well. That explained how uh, quite often the Pleiadians would be able to understand things about us. On another occasion, uh, Billy had been told by Simeasi that Pope Paul VI would be killed by his own cardinals. And Billy uh, uh, ask her later on, he says, something's going on here because there was a prediction that Pope Paul VI uh, would be killed by the cardinals, but he has not. He's still in office, and he wanted to know what happened. And she says, oh, yes, it did happen. Two years after he was named to the office, he was killed. And he doesn't understand this. And he says, you're speaking in riddles. How can I understand that? Pope Paul VI is still alive, and yet he was poisoned and is dead? I don't understand what you mean. So she went on to explain that the good Pope Paul VI was recognized as being, uh, he went against most of the goals and purposes of the Catholic bishops and cardinals, so they went into a secret conference and decided to get rid of him. 
So it was decided by a secret ballot that the uh, Pope would be killed by assassins and that there would be a double put in his place who would follow the designs of the bishops and the cardinals. So Pope Paul VI was poisoned to death and replaced by the cardinals with someone with astonishing similarities. They even went to the trouble of after the double was put in place, they even went to the trouble of the erasing most of Pope Paul VI's uh, personal belongings, pictures, uh, books showing him in school and his earlier life and so forth. So it would erase any images of what the man really looked like. Billy, on a couple of occasions, also received prophecies from what he calls the Patali level. And as I explained earlier, the Patali level is the highest consciousness in the universe. It is a level of collective consciousness that has risen to um, that knowledge where it is beyond the physical realm and has total knowledge of all that they see and total understanding. On Thursday the 29th of January 1976 at 105 a.m. Billy received these prophecies. Now, these prophecies are particularly kind of um, stinging to our future because this particular prophecy was all revolving around the evil one, the anti-logos, the sign of the 666, the antichrist, if you will. And it is the short story here of kind of about his life and what's going to happen. And um, I'll go over and kind of tell you basically the details here. But it reads pretty much the same as any of us who have read in the Bible and so forth. There doesn't seem to be much difference really in the, uh, in the prophecy at all. And it's one of great destruction and war and so forth, and it's certainly a bad time to be in Europe. So it says it's the child of the evil one, the child of destruction it's called. Uh, there will be a deadly adversary to knowledge, wisdom, and truth. Uh, the anti-logos then appears in multiple form. It is the power of the evil one, the 666, which means there is against the truth of creation, is what the 666 actually stands for. Uh, we think of it as the Antichrist because we're told by religions that the Antichrist person will be against Christ. Well, part of that is true because Christ, uh, which is the name given to Emmanuel, uh, who taught the truth about what creation is. But this is, they're saying here that the 6-6 six, six is really against the truth of creation. So we are a little wrong in our uh, uh, explanation. It's an anti-Christ. It's not an anti-Christ. It's an anti-truth situation. And that the symbolism of 666 means it will be through a time period when people will refuse to believe the truth about creation and will refuse to live their lives according to spiritual laws and truth of spirit. Okay, and it talks about that this Antichrist, as I will call him, since that's what we're all used to hearing, is the embodiment of the powerful, lawless, bloodthirstiness of the Antilogos. He has deceptive powers. He'll be capable of what we think of as miracles. All types of temptations, deceptions, lies, and fraud. Um, it says something about in the eighth sequence is conceived the anti-logos in totality. The thing is the person of untruth, of humiliation, of destruction, and of death. I don't understand what eighth sequence means, but someone I don't understand what eighth sequence means, but someone that uh, is more into the numerology of this probably does. It says before the antichrist is born, there are seven embodiments of powerful ones all part of the anti-logos or evil sort of uh, build-up apparently that's going on. Seven children of the evil one uh, that are bent on uh, death and destruction will kill millions of people. The actual antichrist, the one that we think of as the antichrist, will be the child of the evil one, born in the womb of a devoted woman of God, conceived in falsehood and lies by the monk. There will be a monk somehow which will make this woman present, uh, pregnant. Uh, he will be born in some inconspicuous place in the east around sunrise, around the seventh hour in the morning. He will be left outside uh, to die, uh, where well, they think he will, at least the monk will, but he isn't. Instead, he's taken and brought to the east and cared for by someone they call a treacherous one, someone who never gets his fill of fraud and deception. The child of this evil one, the Antichrist, actually exists in... Um, uh, in multiple form, the now and the before. 
because they're talking here about the fact that the Antichrist will be the duplicate, look like the twin of Emmanuel, but in appearance, but still isn't actually a duplicate. This Antichrist child will be protected and surrounded by the power of the one called the Evil One, who power, he understands the great power that the Antichrist will have. The, apparently, this Antichrist child will come into its power in about its eleventh year, and and approximately eight years after that, when he's nineteen, apparently his abilities of mind become very strong, and he will be able to control people through thought. He's the complete killer of all truth. Um, teaching heresy, delusion. Uh, he's in, just definitely been on destruction. It says here that the fruits of his evil begin to happen around his 30th year. But by the 19th year, he's already has been able to cause a lot of death. His power comes in killing. Uh, he burns the world that there will be a 27 years of hate and bloodshed and fire because of him. Sounds like a pretty sight, doesn't it? It even goes on to talk about the plant kingdom on so forth. Learns how to thrive on the blood. That there are so many deaths on the ground that the wa uh, blood just flows like water on the ground. That there's so much loss of life. Um, goes on to talk about here that he comes in kind of a disguised form at the beginning. When we first start to see him, he will present himself as a follower of Jesus Christ. He will be pretend to be sent from God, a preparer of the way. <clears throat> he will call himself the great savior. <clears throat> he even puts himself uh, as a creation and says that he is the uh, creation himself and has created all of us. So he's full of delusion, fear, uh, power. In actuality, he's just out to exterminate things and uh, kill all life off here on the planet talks about the war beginning because of him, blood and fire, horrible firestorms. Here again we have this mention of firestorms where the air is actually ignited and set on fire somehow and just brings horrible death to large areas of people. It says it's, uh, it is the time of vice as seen, vice seen as a virtue, that there will be cult religions springing up everywhere, one killing the other, people literally just going crazy. Uh, and the war will last, it says, for approximately 27 years. And this Antichrist will raise armies which have possession of the deadliest weapons on the planet and will bring the whole world to its knees. I don't know where this guy's going to come from. Uh, it mentions also that he's capable of stealing the thoughts of men, is how they say it. So apparently he has the ability to really to perceive how people think and also control their thoughts. He somehow is very wise in future events, too, because he watches very carefully and interprets certain events that are about to happen. For instance, he knows when a giant comet is about to strike the earth, causing flooding and so forth, and tremendous problems. And apparently he'll take advantage of that. He's the biggest enemy of the earth, chosen himself to be more horrible and deadly than anything else we've ever seen. It says, deadly and burning like gold of the sun, destroying through metal birds and lightning of death. This happens towards the middle of the year, close to the turn of the millennium. Well, we're coming up to that. It's 92, so we're getting closer to the turn of the millennium. So this is beginning to sound like uh, this uh, deadly war could break out 95, 6, 7, maybe in that period at some point. Um says also woe to the city of the peace conference in the heart of Europe that idolaters men in power and so forth start piling up large amounts of silver and gold and so forth the first war is stored up in the east and the north and earth goes around its sun twice okay and there'll be 10 moon revolutions uh, where there will be a peace after that war Ten revolutions of the moon, it says, uh, there will be a deceptive peace. And then just when we're not expecting it again, metal messengers of death fall from heaven. They carry in themselves lightning, fire, and heat. The cities of Europe start falling and burning in ashes, and there's just nothing. All are killed. It says three revolutions around the sun uh, that uh, the Antilogos again exerts itself. 
and he has become grown now, very powerful. But he can't, he is murdered in the third revolution, whatever the third revolution actually means. So 27 years would have passed during these three major uh, epics of war, it was beginning to look like. And it just talks a little bit about what is left. The two-thirds of the population of the planet will have died out. Uh, that men then, the people that are remaining then, uh, will, will have woken up, will consider all the survivors and uh, they'll look to each other as brothers. And that this is the time when actually people then will start turning to the spirit, will have come face to face with what, uh, how the religions have really caused so many problems and how the deadly cults and so forth have really ruined people's thinking, made illogical thinking, turned brother against brother. And it's a great time then for the spirit to find some have worth and people will start to begin to turn towards the creational laws and start to live in a peace and wisdom. There are several other uh, short prophecies given by this Batali level at different times. On uh, Saturday the 31st of January 1976, uh, Billy was giving another little prophecy about a meteor. That apparently, uh, it says that there will be a great meteor uh, come from outer space and, and hit the planet Earth. Uh, like a comet, it says it falls into the big pond, burns the air like a glowing ball in the year with the worth of three with a hideous bang. So you may want to figure out whatever year there and has the worth of three. It says that it's a gigantic comet that hits so hard it crashes right into the earth. Its speed and velocity are stro so strong that it brings a deadly destructive seed. Mountains actually crumble. Tremendous loss of life. It says it is a monster of death that now ruins everything. People cry out and so forth from misery because it's causing so much havoc on the planet. Apparently there's giant flooding. The air is just terrible. Uh, people are yelling and screaming, but there's nothing that they can really do. So we have that to look forward to, apparently, in the year with a worth of three. The Patali level at that same time also gave us some, some more little cheering news. It just talks about how the uh, Mother Nature is going to rise up and there are going to be tremendous gales, typhoons, and hurricanes, uh, which are going to be far greater than anything we've seen before. Well, we're already starting to see those. Cause in the past year, hurricanes hit Hawaii and the southern part of uh, Florida and so forth and wiped out whole cities. It says that ships, giants of the sea, sink in the sea and great hosts of soldiers will be wiped out. Iron birds that uh, through the air they fly, crushed they will lie on the earth, crash in the sign of madness. It says in great numbers uh, the, the, the metal birds fall from the sky, cries of help but it's of no help, uh, nothing can be done. So apparently we're going to have a lot of airplanes in the air it looks like and there's going to be a lot of reports of airplanes hitting the ground with great amount of death caused by uh, natural causes and so forth. So, that same cheery pro prophecy goes on for about another page, just kind of um, letting the people of Earth know that we've created most of this through our thinking. Again, evidence that our subconscious really does affect the planet. Well, I see we're running out of tape, so I'll see you on the other side. Well, welcome back here to side two of the prophecies. And again, I uh, reiterate that these are prophecies that we have some control in these events, although a lot of the things we're talking about now are predictions which come from the higher Patali level, which come to pass uh, whether we really have any say-so about it or not. Uh, most of these events that the Patali level is passing on to us are uh, events of natural disasters, volcanic, earthquake, and so forth, how the world is really going to change. And there's not much we can really do anything about it. If something were to be done about it, it would have had to have been done long ago. And apparently our, the subconscious uh, thoughts, which are emitted by the five, ma five billion people on Earth, could have had something to do with it and may in the future do something to make things a little calmer, but for the most part it's too late for that. On Wednesday the 4th of February 1976 at 6.10 a.m., uh, Billy apparently never sleeps. He's up all night doing this stuff. Uh, he received another uh, level of information from the Patali level which talked mostly about earthquakes and volcanoes. And it talks about the... Uh, Volcanoes swelling up so high that they burst forth, of course, 
catapulting uh, fire and lava through the air, causing great destruction of life. And it goes on to um, mention, and I'll read just a little bit here, it says, Already the first time of destruction is here in the south land, the old original inhabitants of America. This land will be hit hard in the near future, as will the land on which the black men hope. Europe will not be spared from the evil, for there under the land resides hell. Billy had been shown once, even inside the ship, that there is volcanic action beneath certain parts of Europe, which no one's really even aware of, which will erupt and cause major loss of life. It says one will speak sadly of the boot country, and that's, of course, Italy, and also of the countries with the blessing of earth gold. Also the land of the cherry blossoms will be shaken, and the city on the trench will be totally filled with rubble. This could probably be uh, interpreted as San Francisco, the city on the trench. And that could be the San Andreas Trench here that they're talking about. Also, the folk in the country of the sword lion will suffer, and the star in the half moon will not be avoided. Country of the gods will be hit or hard hit. The countries of the dragon and the hope of peace, when the fire of the volcano glistens hellishly, and the earthquake tears apart everything in many lands. So it's a pretty, uh, uh, not very cheery scenario there. talks about in Latin America, uh, the border countries in Latin America, says in the south from Latin America's borders, there the earthquake will hit uh, very hard, uh, taking lo a lot of lives. And um, there's just a little bit more mention, but it doesn't go into detail in this particular one in any more exact locations. Just kind of that coding there that we read a little bit earlier, so you might try to figure that out. There is unfortunately kind of a sad commentary on uh, Great Britain. It talks about the island kingdom has been shaken uh, in the northern Atlantic waters. It's the year of evil, the black time there where death awaits the country. Uh, it says the crown vacillates as an evil reward as work and deed of the cult religion. Politics plays a role as well and destroys the good island homeland. The crown falls and breaks. The house of Windsor is asunder. The island kingdom is shaken, bones are brittle and pale, the kingdom has fallen, only legends about it remain. In the prophecies there's something very interesting which I've never understood very well. It happened on Thursday the 4th of March 1987 at 1.47 a.m. And I'll go through this prophecy, it's from the Patali level again, and it's talking about someone in Switzerland. And uh, it goes through talking about this individual, and you'll see what I mean. And after you hear the prophecy, it's confusing a little bit about who they're actually referring to. It almost sounds like they're talking about Billy, but it doesn't come out and say so. It says, you shepherd boy in very beautiful Switzerland, your blind eyes are filled with sand. In your own megalomania of thinking that you know better, you perceive yourself very educated, clever, and wise, when the father of death slowly sneaks up. It says, audaciously, this person of Switzerland will think that he knows all the prophecies very well which are being explained to him. He will want to be very wise and clever, although only really stupid ignorance screams inside of you, it says. You believe in your great exuberance that the prophecies were of no importance to you, and you even thought that you knew everything, and yet what do you know when, uh, if you had to? Be honest with yourself, it says. Everything is only illusion, an evil product from your megalomania shrine. It is easy for you to say after the fact that you had seen it all come in yourself. Where is your wisdom to do this? It says, all of your knowledge and thoughts rest. It says, don't overexert yourself in your exaggerations, for through them you will cause feuds for yourself. It says, you always want to be wiser than the others. <clears throat> then why aren't these prophecies your own? Remember, if you know and can do everything better, why has death and need sprung up everywhere? There's no truth in what you think which shows your erroneous, stupid sense. You cannot interpret one single event in order to explain it to the Swiss people before it happens. Nevertheless, Swiss person, you presume so to say, I knew it all along and more. But what did you know, not the least? Therefore, the death's ruination is already grinning at you. 
It goes on to talk about mountains that will break off. There's going to be great fires. Uh, it says the metal of the SBB, which is the Swiss train system, is torn in many places. It says you don't pay attention to these signs. You don't see the damage, the need, and the corpse. You presume very much and even say that you knew everything beforehand. But you will see that your speeches are dung and your prophecies only utter ruse. For now that the first events have happened as an introduction, you will see many things much worse. There will be a great crash on the SBB soon. It will be termed the bad luck train. There's going to be mountains falling and major loss of life in Switzerland. This is a coming hell is coming to Switzerland. Mountains will break off the ridges, destroy live houses, huge areas. The Wurgen Spitz Mountain, it says, was only the beginning. Now, I don't know what the Wurgen Spitz Mountain's all about. We might want to look and see if something's happened with a mountain called Wurgen Spitz and see if that's happened yet. So it's because other mountains will follow this severe crashing action. The lakes, of course, will cause great misery, it says, and demand victims as well. Uh, that there will be great fire, the earth itself will quake dangerously, and the Swiss will experience then hell day after day of fear. It goes on to talk about uh, water, storms, droughts, and snow will rule. The hearts of the Swiss people will turn even colder. All the cantons, which are what they call counties in Switzerland, in beautiful Switzerland, will live on with gruesome, the cold hand of death. And then uh, it says, in Switzerland will become a coffin many times over. Then you can say again, O Swiss person, that you carried all this knowledge in yourself, that you knew of all the coming events, because you had seen them prophetically. You want to be very clever and so intelligent, thinking that your wisdom fell like snow on your head. But where is your wisdom? Where are your knowledge? For it is always invisible just to be overlooked. Therefore, don't boast about supposed understanding and ancient supposed understanding. Uh, and don't praise yourself too much because you really know nothing at all. This is a really curious prophecy. It's talking about somebody in Switzerland who's thinking they're very prophetic, who knows a lot, and who really knows nothing. It doesn't give us any indication of who it is. First time I read it, I thought it was some strange miswritten thing, and it was referring to Billy. But there's no reference strange miswritten thing, and it was referring to Billy. But there's no reference really to Billy either. So apparently, there's someone in Switzerland who thinks he's hot stuff, and he's got the prophecy thing uh, really nailed, but he doesn't. So it might be interesting to see how that reveals itself. The last little cheery note from Patali here was on Thursday the 4th of March 1976 at 3.16 a.m. Again, Billy's up in the middle of the night. And it's talking about, uh, actually just more death and destruction here. It's talking about that there's a time that will come over the world, a terrible time in which death and destruction will hasten over the planet. From the far west and from the far east, it says it sweeps as the very last deadly warning sign. It will be shaken, the old Mother Earth, violently and angrily, the result of man's madness, the reward of his insanity. So apparently maybe we're setting off underground testing, maybe there'll be some accident in the air with some of our weapons, which is suggesting here that we goof up something, uh, unleashing terrible problems with the planet and terrible earthquakes. So the earthquakes will now rupture the very core of the Earth itself, severely demolishing human life, buildings, and herds. At this time, deep in the Peruvian jungles, there will be giant warriors come across village and settlements, killing and taking women. This is the last sign of the coming terrible time, when an old enemy of the Incas stalk killing and pillaging break forth from their century-old hiding place in the jungle, where they lived in leaf huts in a deep tunnel in the earth. So uh, I've even read about that already starting to happen deep in Peru where some giant like red uh, skinned beans are coming forth and kidnapping women and taking them away from the villages. So apparently that's starting to happen already. In Peru, the first severe quake will roll to Udine, U-D-I-N-E. Maybe that's a town or a part of a country, I don't know. When deep in the Earth's core, fire and explosions angrily growl. The countryside's torn apart. There's major volcanoes and destructions. South America quakes and steams from the blows and the smoke, enveloped in muffled bellowing and gray smoke of death. America and all of its islands need to be named as well. Then Japan, Arabia, China, India, countries which burn. 
they will also be visited by droughts and earthquakes. So that's the uh, as much of the prophecy thing that's actually been done. There are other things in there, but uh, nearly not quite nearly as staggering. So I think you can even understand that most of these uh, prophecies aren't really uh, unexpected. Uh, a lot of these events are already starting to pass, and uh, most of us know that something's going to happen anyway. So uh, the main thing I think about the prophecies is that to learn in order to survive this coming period, which physically might be hard, it might be difficult to find a, a place to live that might survive. Uh, Billy did tell me that the two strongest areas of the planet which survive most of the earthquake and volcanic action are Australia and Peru, by virtue really of the strong foundation of land that they're actually on. So if you feel like moving to Peru, you might have a little better odds of missing out on some of the terrible destruction. But it's talking here, and mentions in there, where whole countries are going to sink below the water. So we're going to have major changes probably. We're going to have to rewrite some of the maps of the planet here. And these events seem to all be happening around the turn of the century or shortly thereafter. There's no dates mentioned in any of this. It's all just events. One other thing that I remember... Uh, Billy telling me that wasn't I didn't see in the prophecy book, but he said that we should watch very closely for uh, Mount Vesuvius in Italy. That Vesuvius, uh, when that erupts, that will be a sign that the major part or the beginning of World War III is about to happen, a terrible time of destruction. And that Mount Vesuvius, what causes it finally to erupt, he says that the largest concentration of negative thinking is, on the planet is actually in Rome. And uh, Mount Vesuvius itself isn't in Rome. It's quite a ways away. I, uh, I think it's like 100, 150 miles away. I may be wrong. I'm forgetting my geography a little from when I was over there. But he says that actually the Mount Vesuvius, if you could see below the ground, that the, uh, the volcano itself doesn't go straight down but actually bends over and uh, goes underneath the city of Rome that the negative thinking in Rome, the subconsciousness in Rome, will be a factor in triggering Mount Vesuvius, and that will be the last major event just before World War III. So if we hear about Mount Vesuvius starting to spurt, or does, then watch very carefully. Uh, in the middle of the night sometime, uh, World War III is going to break out, and somebody's going to attack somebody. So we do live in pretty dangerous times. Here in 92, we're looking at Russia suddenly having... Uh, tens of thousands, I think something like 27 or 37,000 warheads that have yet to be dismantled. We have all over the East all sorts of third world nations which have over the years purchased and uh, built uh, terrible missiles of their own. Uh, look what just happened in the Desert Storm thing where we found Saddam Hussein was building nuclear devices, chemical missiles. Fortunately their technology seemed to be a little sad over there. But uh, we're going to pay the price, probably, for selling all these people arms. I remember the rationalization of our own people in Congress years ago when uh, they were talking about selling planes and missiles and so forth to countries in the East. And they just commented that, well, we might as well do this, because if we don't do it, some other country will. Well, that's pretty silly thinking. You know, just because somebody else may give a child a match uh, doesn't mean we have to. You know, we, we're probably contributing to our own death and destruction here by arming all these maniac people who have no responsibility with this type of technology. So I would suppose that from an extraterrestrial's point of view, looking down on Earth, this would indeed seem to appear to be kind of an insane planet. It's interesting that on one of the first contacts that Billy Meyer had with the Pleiadians, uh, they said something that went like this, that we see the planet Earth uh, rushing headlong to its own destruction that could only be averted by change in mass consciousness. And that seems to be about where we are. We are at a point where we are rushing headlong to obviously a lot of destruction. You only have to watch the evening news at night to see that there are major problems, wars, death all over the planet. Uh, not to mention just the natural problems. All the famine, uh, all of the water problems, drought, death from disease everywhere. And, of course, we're facing uh, the problem here even with AIDS. Uh, but the natural disasters are going to cause major loss of life. The World War III throughout Europe and Asia will be devastating. It even talks in there also about China uh, apparently taking advantage or seizing the opportunity to march into India at some point and hit New Delhi, wipe it out, take over India. So if you've um, 
had any inclination to go to India to see it, you might want to do that soon. I know myself, I've wanted to go to Kashmir and kind of follow the path, the old path of Emmanuel and uh, look into some of that old history. If you're thinking about seeing India, you might want to do it soon because India apparently will be gone. It will be overrun by the Chinese and ruined forever, and they will sweep into the east after that. Interestingly enough that most of these um, uh, prophecies uh, follow pretty much the same line even of Nostradamus. If you've read some of the books on Nostradamus, of course there are many people who have believed to translated the codes of us, uh, the quatrains of Nostradamus, but uh, in most of the books they seem to maybe not get the dates right, but pretty much all these events are the same. As well, this falls in line pretty much with biblical prophecy. So here we've had a prophecy for almost 2,000 years telling us about this time and the things that would happen, and yet we paid no attention. Well, at least the masses haven't. I tend to think that in some parts of this planet, probably underground, certain governments, uh, probably our own, have gone to great trouble probably to start or initiate uh, new societies which will survive all of this. It's quite possible that as some UFO speakers talk about, there may already be colonies on the moon or working on building them on Mars to actually dis uh, survive all to actually dis uh, survive all of this. And maybe that's what's going to happen, that there will be major destruction on this planet. It might even be unleashed to some extent by some of the governments just to kill off all the illogical, insane third world. And it can be repopulated and reclaimed up then at a later time when there's a much smaller, more sane uh, group of people left. Well, whatever uh, the case may be, uh, here we are at historical times. We're on the very eve of destruction, as someone once said before. It's 92. Events easily will start happening uh, very soon. Uh, we can probably certainly look forward to the earthquakes and volcanoes, which are already happening all over the planet, to begin to pick up and get stronger and stronger. So watch out for these red-skinned people in Peru that come forward, which are a signal of the beginning of bad times. And keep your eye on Mount Vesuvius for an eruption, because that will surely begin the beginning of World War III. Interesting also in the uh, predictions, which were back in 76, uh, there was some prophecy about Russia invading into Turkey and taking that over. Uh, Russia, as we know now, doesn't exist. It's more or less been disbanded. Of course, the KGB is still uh, in existence, so something may actually happen there yet. But it talks in there about Russia uh, being part of the major world war scenario and actually taking action against some countries. But uh, it looks as though Russia's kind of broken up and uh, is having enough internal problems of its own. So it's quite possible that since that uh, time period when those prophecies were made, that there could have been some intervention on behalf of ETs or free will of man or whatever, and maybe events are changing a little bit. I would tend to think that events are speeding up. It may not be as bad as originally thought. I think consciousness surely is rising around the world. We can look here to the recent elections in America and get some hope there. For years, people have not paid much of any attention to their politics. We become a lazy country more and more just wanting our country to do something for us, living our own little lives and not pitching in and taking any part in what's going on. And now we've seen a major part of the country starting to get uh, more and more active in the politics. Because of Ross Perot, if nothing else, he's rallied people everywhere to start becoming more responsible and paying attention to our problems. And now as I'm making this tape, which is in November of 92, uh, we're looking forward to having the administration of Bill Clinton, uh, which, by the way, he's not mentioned at all in the prophecies. I see no name about that anywhere. So it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen with the momentum of people caring about government just a little bit now and getting a fresher, younger man into office with some new ideas to go confront Congress with. We have a very difficult economy, so perhaps the future of the world is going to start changing a little bit for the better. If we as Americans can start taking our responsibility of leadership a little better, taking a little better part in how we actually affect other countries, instead of leaving it up to the CIA to either kill the leaders or take them over uh, through deadly means, perhaps we can actually become, start becoming an inspiration to other countries around the world uh, through our leadership, through our wisdom, and role modeling as being citizens of the 21st century. 
Well, there's one other little set of uh, transmissions here from the Batali level that uh, came in in 1981, about 4 in the morning. And um, then there's one other set after that on the 19th of November, 1981, uh, in the afternoon, about 5.30 in the afternoon. And this was information all surrounding the uh, Third World War and the events that would happen there. We talked earlier about uh, that the Antichrist would actually come, that the 27 years of war as prophesied was at the moment probably going to go down uh, just pretty much the way it had always intended because nothing was being done to change mass consciousness. Although that was prophesied in 76, and again it's a prophecy that can be changed because of free will. I tend to think that we've actually done uh, quite a bit of groundwork in changing that and even though there probably will be a war, it may not be near as bad as we think. But at any rate, uh, since the purpose of these tapes is to at least inform you about the billion wire material, let me follow through with that and at least go through these prophecies about the Third World War, and you can read them, and then as things are nearly as bad as they turn out to be, uh, we can see you know, how things actually got better when all this is over. It, of course, talks about... Uh, the uh, war starting, and it starts off by saying that Europe actually just sinks in ashes and embers, that there's so much bloodshed. There are millions of deaths, raging, people are screaming, and so forth. The third world fire, it says, is conjured up by the hands of humans through religious sex, greed, hate, and power. Well, we've got plenty of that going on the planet, so that won't be too hard to understand. It talks about people, uh, it goes on to say the Third World War is caused because people don't seek the truth. And there's a little bit of lesson here for us about uh, not leading a very spiritual life, but uh, spending mostly a life of material gains, greed, and power. It says Europe will be the central point for all that's going to happen and what's going to happen here. Germany, where life still flowers, there will be a hundred atomic suns will glow and destroy everything in a roaring fire. Most of Germany apparently is just wiped out. The world powerful manage irresponsibly. The Europeans see the world fire. Um, the atomic fire is going to burn pretty much everything there. There's a lot of talk about all this fire. It says the powerful people crawl in to secure bunkers and hide out, uh, while the rest of us have to stay up on the ground without any protection and are killed. Uh, that's, it says thus the powerful survive in the bunker shrines. Uh, they, the great of the world, play poker for power, and each of them hides, says, while they're laughing and while they toss their deadly fire on peace-seeking Europe as pay. So Europe is really going to catch it here. It talks about the atomic death in Europe where chemical and bacteria bombs fall. Radioactive radiation destroys much of the life. Under waves of neutrons, the countries will quake. It says it sp uh, spreads a slow death torturously, which lasts for days, months, and years. Apparently, people, there's so many new diseases caused because of the chemical bombs that uh, people die a very slow, painful death. Um, let's see, it says Thursday, November 19th, 1981, at 5.45 p.m. It uh, goes on talking more about the war. It says people will be driven unmercifully into horrible deaths, uh, just as it was predicted 2,000 years ago. The cause, of course, again, is going to be politics, religion, and other insanities, which include greed and power. All those things were so... Um, very aware of, it says the world, the world war will break out in Europe, and every day of no war is precious. It says the, short is, uh, the times of peace are very short because the world fire spreads extensively and very quickly and is going to start destroying everything unmercifully. Uh, it says Europe, the center of the power for competition, will be devoured by the powerful of the world who have chosen this area for the battle uh, so that their own land will remain intact. So let's, let's think about that a second. It says that the, the war is going to be caused center stage and so forth in Europe uh, by very powerful people of the world who chose this area for the battle. So someone outside of Europe is actually kind of setting the war up and making sure that it happens there. Well, that could be, uh, who else could cause that? Us, Arab nations, China, something like that. So um, it says the powerful beat their war axe on Europe's head and while Europe spoils in the fire, the power-hungry thirst for more power, therefore other parts of Mother Earth will be subjected to their power and greed. So it's time to go to war. 
On Friday, November 20th, 1981, another transmission comes through which starts to talk even more about it. And it gets into the anti-Logos thing, the Antichrist, where he's sweeping over the whole world, Christian and non-Christian countries as well, if it says fall to their death. Then um, let me kind of move along here to some of the better stuff. Um, here again, it reiterates that 25 million people will be led to death alone, will be led to death alone in India, uh, because the uh, yellow storm wave of China, they call that the yellow storm, uh, pushes into India and starts the battle for New Delhi. And after this victory, uh, all of India will be completely conquered by the power of the Chinese. Talks about Persia and Turkey will also fall into the war. Uh, when Russia invades into those countries to take it over because of the oil reserves. But this won't even be enough for Turkey. That It will also be invaded by another influence. The Christian cults will move in and f try to force the Turks into Christianity. Um, it says uh, this could only be prevented perhaps by maybe the United Nations may try to help, but it probably will happen anyway. The Balkan states fall into a great uproar and begin their own war. Uh, driven into it by the Bolshevists, who will still be continuing their bloody work after their power was even falsely taken from them. Uh, let's see, it goes on here to talk about Africa, and Arabia will be taken in order to make the conquering of Europe easier. Okay, So that's suggesting that the Chinese would do that. They would sweep through India, and then move into Africa and Arabia, uh, and that way it's far easier for them to get into Europe says it'll be very rough for the Balkan states after the Red Flood has conquered the area. The Red Flood is making reference throughout here. Uh, that means Russia. It says Italy will be destroyed for the most part and millions of people will be homeless. The religious leaders will meet a brutal death for the most part. The Pope will flee across the waters of the Atlantic. Uh, he's actually going to hide out in South America somewhere in Brazil, I believe. The Red Flood, the Russians will roll through Hungary, Austria, Switzerland, and Italy from the east of France uh, in order to be conquered, says, by the hammer and sickle carriers. So the Russians are going to be a little busy guys, but, of course, it doesn't look very likely that that part could happen right now because Russia is really not together. So consciousness maybe has changed. Maybe some extraterrestrial influences have happened. And uh, as I've always believed, most of this won't happen or won't be nearly as bad as it's written here. It says the American weapon uh, depots in France will fall into the hands of the Russians, and they'll take those over. And uh, it says this will be at a time which Bolshevism will rule there for a longer period of time, and it leads the war against England, Spain, and Scandinavia. So everybody's going to fight. Uh, this war will be terrible for the whole entire world, but especially for France and the rest of Europe. Plagues and diseases unknown to uh, at that time will appear raging across Europe which will be caused by the bacteria and radiation from the weapons of the war. The young people will be especially affected and will experience blindness, madness, or complete destruction of the body. Germany will suffer an attack from the east, from the GDR, through which a civil war will flame up in which German will fight against German. The Russians uh, in their order also, France will invade Norway and Sweden, while Finland will be invaded and conquered as well. Uh, it says GTE Borg, Get Borg, will be French Red, and the two kingdoms will be totally defeated in this war. They'll have to relinquish their northern territories to the Russians from the east. All of the countries bordering the North Sea and England will be destroyed by a terrible flood, which is caused by the flood bomb and by a hurricane. Cities and villages are going to submerge under the sea and uh, will lose most of Scotland. England's position as a world leader will be totally destroyed forever as the Russians from the east will cause a revolution to break out in England itself, whose bloodiness will greatly exceed that of the German Civil War. South Wales will be defeated through revolts and a pouring out of blood. Ireland, it says, bleeds to death in a murderous war. America will be thrown into another war with Canada because of political complications and a massive attack of the Red Flood on America has the result that the largest part of the U.S. troops have to fight in their own country and can't run and help out poor Europe. But running to the aid of Europe, it says, would be senseless anyway because the, through the use of the newest weapons, America will be for the most part destroyed. 
So we're talking again here about the uh, Chinese people developing weapons that actually ignite the air. It says, through nature, catastrophe weapons, elemental weapons, of whose existence in 1981 only a few people know about, terrible and horrible hurricanes will be released on the American continent. So they're not talking about bombing us, they're talking about elemental weapons which are going to cause hurricanes that we just won't believe. It says it'll crush and destroy everything in their past. These hurricanes are connected with monstrous gigantic waves of fire. Creeping barrages, it says, which will race across the land and eat everything in debris and ashes, because of which everything will be destroyed. One of these giant's hurricanes, however, says the biggest of all of them will ravage and destroy absolutely everything. Uh, and, and what it doesn't destroy it will fall merc uh, mercifully before the roaring inferno of the following wave of fire. So apparently there's going to come major hurricane, hurricane with huge waves over the American continent followed by waves of fire. It says the hurricane will race northward across the American continent. It will suddenly change its course, course towards the northeast. It will race across the continent sweeping and destroying everything. It will move out into the Atlantic where it will cause a raging storm with such a high tidal wave that observers will say that it looks like a huge mountain that heads straight towards Europe. Following the hurricane, which is, uh, yeah, heads straight for Europe, then the beginning of recorded history, uh, so since the beginning of recorded history, nothing like this has ever been seen. The flood races over, over England and the states of northern Europe in order to destroy everything, let cities, villages, people, animals, and islands sink, while the hurricane itself follows consistently its northeast course racing towards Spain and the Mediterranean, which there it destroys everything also. The hurricane then continues and uh, doesn't even peter out till it moves clear over into the east somewhere. It says that two-thirds of humanity will die through this third world war. It will be in the billions. In the coming time, it says America will experience two civil wars, which will divide the country politically into four to five parts. Should, this, should the already threatened and very soon expected world war with, uh, end without destroying the entire world, then it can only be because the power hungry of the world powers will come to a compromise. Otherwise, every living thing on the planet Earth must die. It goes on to talk about also the world fire, apparently these elemental weapons which are going to be unleashed, setting the atmosphere on fire. Um, flood also into southern Germany and starts burning everything, it says, to the end, and the Duna will be destroyed. Now, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. It's spelled D-O-N-A-U. It says that will be destroyed and leveled to the ground. The rivers literally lose their water, so nobody even needs to use a bridge anymore. The hellfire... It burns and burns the land so much that the land is actually steaming, that there's so much death and destruction. There's so many bombs hit Germany. So apparently somebody's really upset with Germany. If that happens to be the Chinese, then uh, their new elemental weapons are going to take their toll out on Germany because Germany's a total goner. It also mentions Switzerland as churches will become stalls for the horses of the Russians, even in Switzerland where religious places of the sects and cults will be used to store the weapons of the Russians and will lie in horse manure a foot high. Hunger, distress, deeds, sickness, plagues, and destruction will break out over Russia, as well and the powerful of the land will find death. Well, Russia is no more, so it will be interesting to see if maybe parts of it unite or maybe just some part of Russia. Maybe the old KGB will rise up to defend itself and get involved when the Chinese begin to attack. Most of World War III seems to uh, attribute the fact that the Chinese will take some particular moment to attack into India, wipe it out, and continue the war. So, this is the, the last and most significant sign for the start of the Third World Fire will be a political fire, will be a political murder, which will take place in a country of the East. Just a short time afterwards and overnight, then the enemy will very quickly invade the countries such that defense will no longer be possible. So it sounds like that the Chinese may uh, actually murder whoever's running India at the time to cause uh, confusion and immediately invade into the country and overrun India. Only a very few people will be in the position to flee and get out and the destruction will rush in like lightning completely unexpected and surprising. 
three main waves of the Russians will cross over into Europe like a three-headed dragon. The lower head will go through Czechoslovakia and then head to the northwest, make its quarters in the Nab Valley in Germany. The second head will roll straight west and overrun the country. It will push on into Saxony and then go straight across Germany. Uh, the third head of the war dragon of the Russians will come roaring from the northeast to the southeast and destroy everything in its path. The main target of the Russians seems to be just wiping out Germany, as well as when they're wiping out Germany, suddenly from the south, there are, uh, it says, swarms of hornets flying over the heaven. The thousands of metallic shining messengers of death uh, screamed towards Germany and exploded and burned Germany completely to the ground. So apparently the Germans have upset a few people, and the Russians are after them, and the Chinese are after them, and the Arabs are after them. And it talks about uh, total destruction with neutron waves and 3R radiation with roaring fire that brings destruction totally. There's a gigantic corridor of death, it's called, will stretch from the south to the north, from Czechoslovakia up to the North Sea. It's caused by the Chinese. There's so much destruction that all life is extinguished. No life form can even cross into it. There's so much disease, bacteria, and radiation in there that no one goes into that zone at all. Goes on to talk about uh, there's no snow on most of the mountains. It's all yellow. Uh, there's a deadly color. It says contained in the from bacteria and disease. Uh, most of the weather is gray and rainy at this time, uh, and the, there's so many deaths. It's just amazing. There's plagues and poisons. There's plagues arriving out of the disease from so many bodies, which we have no defense again, and take a terrible toll. It says, Italy and France will be shaken by the sans culottes, whatever that is, who will destroy any semblance of order with killing and burning. Interestingly enough, Paris will be gone. It will be destroyed by the, its own people. The inhabitants themselves, apparently, uh, will just burn it down. Perhaps we'll see something like uh, what we saw in Los Angeles with the riots here. So apparently, uh, Paris is going to fall into the same problem. It says... Um, that the uh, church leaders will be massacred in France uh, because of the cowardice of the Pope, and he hides out. Uh, well, actually, the Pope is already run and hidden, taken off for South America, leaving all of his churches to be burned to the ground, and the Catholic religion pretty much is just all gone. Part of Scotland will sink into the sea when a gigantic flood wage rages over the, uh, the whole land. High as a mountain, it says, it pulls everything underneath itself, destroying and bringing death in order to make different parts, make different islands sink into the wild waters. So Scotland's not a good place to be. Talks about murder and mayhem all over the east. Uh, and, and it goes on for a long period of time. Then, uh, interestingly enough, it says, uh, towards the end of it, uh, that the Pope says the people of Earth will, after the end of the world fire, says there's not hardly anybody left. Two-thirds of the people are dead all around the world, and most of Europe is totally gone. And the Pope will then come out of hiding in South America and try to uh, take over again and reestablish Catholicism so once again uh, he can uh, have control over all the people that are really left. But it's a very dangerous time. There are the At that point, people are just, uh, you know, the ones that are left, or I guess are apparently just stunned by all the war, and uh, there's going to be a lot of cults and a lot of things, uh, different religions springing up and trying to reform themselves to take control over the planet. The same old stuff that caused the war, once again, is going to try to get a hold of it. Well, I think that's about enough for uh, the prophecies, especially the World War III part. These prophecies were uh, 76 through 81 they were given, Time has gone by, consciousness has changed, even though there may be some war, I have no doubt that it will not be that bad whatsoever. I don't think the war of the world is really heading for its destruction like it's portrayed here, uh, although it is quite possible that the Chinese might do something. Uh, at the moment, we've got the old Chinese in power, and they're coming into Hong Kong in 97, so we'll have to be careful and see if they do take the opportunity to actually invade into India, as this suggests. Uh, I'm also aware that even our own government, the CIA, and our own powerful people are probably just as aware of these prophecies as anybody else, and they, ha they have to be. And I think anybody who's been watching for you know the last few years has uh, grown up with all sorts of uh, prophetic things, either in the Bible or whatever, made aware to them. 
So I think even if some of these things begin, like if China does begin to attack or a war breaks out in Europe, uh, something can probably be done to stop it. I don't think there's any way it's going to lead to the destruction that we're talking about here. But I thought, if uh, nothing else, I felt obligated to at least tell you what's in the prophecy book and um, try to try to laugh it off <laughs> and lighten it up a little bit and learn to just keep yourself in the light. Learn to develop your spiritual self and get that inner feeling of confidence and reliance, and this will mean really nothing to you. It will just appear as just a story that couldn't happen to you. And by any means, do not let any sort of fear or anger swell up in you, because you won't be affected by this. As long as, no matter what happens out there, as long as you can spiritually keep yourself in a point of light and surround yourself with your own energy of light, then you won't be affected by all the fear, hate, and anger that gets unleashed during these coming times. Okay, well, if you haven't um, burnt yourself off completely from these tapes now, there's a few more to go, and I promise you that all the rest of the tapes are far more uplifting and more positive uh, than this one is, and um, again, just remember that prophecies are just warnings. It is interesting to note, though, I'm curious, though, to see if uh, some sort of civil war does kind of rise up in America. Our recent elections uh, aren't suggestive of a civil war, but they're certainly suggestive that people are starting to take more of an interest in the country. They're distrustful of a government. They're distrustful of a government that keeps hidden bases, secret things from them. We know the government's been lying to us for years. There seems to be some separation of power within our own government where certain levels of the CIA and NSA seem to be operating uh, cities underground and uh, large groups of people that are outside the law. It's even suggestive here in UFO circles that we could be on the moon or Mars with small groups of our own people who are trying to live above and beyond the planet Earth using technology which is not available to uh, those of us here on the surface world. So that these even may be some of the causes of the war coming up. So it'll be interesting to see how history unfolds. But for myself, I'm going to try to take part in how history unfolds by helping myself and other people to at least live without fear. And perhaps if we can spread the word a little bit more about mass consciousness, we can actually avert all of this. So I think that's our job, that's our role. We need to find ways to find peace with ourselves, and then find ways to share it so it multiplies, so we can change mass consciousness. Ever since I've heard about the Billy Meyer contacts and the Pleiadians, that the thing, that's the part that's always stuck out of my mind, that phrase they said about us needing to avert our destruction by a change in mass consciousness. And I totally agree with that. And I think that's what we really have to all work on, is affecting this mass consciousness that is so illogical. Okay, you can fast forward now, and that's the end of the prophecy tape.